In a land where the whispers of nature spoke louder than the clamor of civilization, there stood a solitary figure, a giant, whose eyes harbored the depth of oceans and whose heart pulsed with the rhythm of the earth itself. His existence was as old as the tales of the earth, whispered by the winds and etched into the stones. This morning, like every morning before, he awoke to the golden embrace of the sun, casting an amber glow over his verdant homeland. The giant, named Orobas, lived in harmony with the sprawling wilds, his days marked by the passage of celestial bodies across the heavens. On this day, however, a stirring curiosity beckoned him towards a place he had never sought before, the horizon where the sky kissed the sea. It was said among the star song of the night that at this hallowed boundary, the secrets of the giant's past and future lay waiting, shrouded in the mist of the unknown. His massive feet, like wandering hills, set forth on a path laced with the dew of dawn. The creatures of the forest paused in their daily forage to gaze upon Orobas with eyes wide with wonder. The birds took flight, forming a fleeting escort as if to guide him to his destiny. The world seemed to hold its breath, watching as the giant began his journey toward the fabled edge of the world. Orobas traversed the landscapes with a gentle might, careful to leave no trace of his passage but the fleeting warmth of his shadow. He crossed rivers that reflected the ever-changing tapestry of the sky and valleys that whispered the secrets of the earth. Each step was a silent song, a homage to the beauty that unfolded before him, a world painted with the delicate brush of the ethereal fantasy. As the sun arched higher, the horizon drew closer, and the seam between sky and sea blurred into a distant, shimmering line. It was there, at the threshold of earth and heaven, that the giant hoped to find the answer to the ancient call that had long echoed in the chambers of his heart, the call to discover where the sky meets the sea, and perhaps where his story began. Orobas, with his vast stride, delved deeper into the mysteries of the world, each footfall a silent testament to his enduring quest. His vast form, a silhouette against the setting sun, became a familiar yet awe-inspiring spectacle for the inhabitants of the world below. They marveled at his passage, this gentle giant who sought the horizon where the sky caresses the sea. The stories that spun around Orobas were as varied as the stars in the night sky. In the eyes of the earthbound children, he was a figure of myth, striding atop the clouds, his purpose as enigmatic as his origins. Some whispered that he was the world's architect, others, a sentinel of the skies, his true purpose known only to him. Orobas, whose heart was as vast as the sky he walked beneath, found solace in his solitary communion with nature. His presence was a blessing to the land, where his hands graced the earth, life sprang forth in abundance. Mountains and valleys were sculpted by his passing, rivers and streams charted new courses to cradle the life he fostered. It was during one twilight, as the sky turned a deep shade of twilight blue, that Orobas's journey took an unexpected turn. He encountered a majestic creature, a dragon whose scales reflected the twilight stars, named Astraeus. This celestial dragon, with eyes that held the wisdom of the ages, beheld Orobas with a serene gaze, recognizing a kindred spirit. The encounter between Orobas and Astraeus was a silent communion of souls. The dragon, too, sought the legendary confluence of the elements, driven by an age-old yearning. As the stars began to freckle the heavens, the two decided to unite their solitary quests. For Orobas, the presence of Astraeus meant the birth of a fellowship that transcended time. As Orobas and Astraeus ventured forth, their shared silence was rich with understanding. They traversed through a forest where the trees whispered secrets of the earth, leaves rustling with tales of yore. Here, the world seemed to breathe with ancient rhythms, and even Orobas tread lightly, respecting the hallowed verdants. The duo emerged upon a cliff overlooking the vastness of the ocean, where the water's roar was a symphony for the soul. Gazing upon the horizon, they pondered the union of sea and sky, a seamless blend of blue hues. Orobus felt a profound connection, as if the ocean's depths mirrored his own heart, mysterious and unexplored. The giant and the dragon descended the cliffs, finding solace in the sea's edge. It was there that Orobus discovered he could no longer feel the firmness of the land. The sand slipped beneath his feet, challenging his balance. This new sensation was unnerving yet exhilarating, a reminder of the ever-changing nature of his quest. One evening, as twilight melded with the sea mist, they encountered a tribe of merfolk whose songs wove magic into the air. The chief, 
a wise mermaid with hair of flowing kelp, offered insights into the depths of the ocean, speaking of a place where the sea's heart beat in rhythm with the world's pulse. The mermaid spoke of a cavern deep below, where light danced across walls of coral and pearls, guiding those who seek the truth of the union. Orobas, moved by the siren's tales, felt the stirrings of a destination within his reach. He knew their journey would take them into the abyss to discover the world's secrets held in the embrace of the ocean's soul. The descent into the ocean's embrace was a descent into another world. Orobas and Astraeus, guided by the merfolk song, swam through the water which shimmered with the light of a thousand suns refracted through the waves above. Fish of every conceivable color darted around, and the water itself seemed to hum with life. Deeper they went, where the sun's reach dwindled, and the ocean's true majesty unveiled itself in the darkness. Bioluminescent creatures like living constellations lit their path. Oribus felt a kinship with these beings, thriving in a place untouched by the sky, his former domain. They reached the cavern, as foretold by the mermaid. It was a cathedral of nature's making, grander than any giant's hall. Stalactites hung like chandeliers, and the walls were adorned with coral and anemones. The cavern pulsed with a rhythm that resonated with Orobas's own heartbeat, a symphony of the sea's deepest secrets. Within the heart of the cavern, they found an orb, cradled by tendrils of coral. It glowed with an ethereal light, a beacon in the watery gloom. As Orobas reached out, the orb's glow intensified, and the cavern's rhythm reached a crescendo, as if responding to the giant's touch. The orb revealed visions of worlds beyond, of realms where giants roamed freely among the stars, where the sky did indeed meet the sea at the edge of the universe. Orobus understood then that his journey was not just of distance, but of spirit. The sky and sea were not places but states of being, interconnected and infinite. Armed with newfound wisdom, Orobus ascended, with Astrius by his side. The ascent was a mirror of their descent, but where once there was a quest for answers, there was now understanding. The ocean sent them off with a chorus of farewells from the merfolk and the songs of whales that rumbled through the water like a gentle thunder. Breaking the surface, they were greeted by the vast expanse of the sky, now a familiar friend rather than an unreachable expanse. The horizon was no longer a boundary, but a reminder of endless possibilities. Oribus knew that the sky and the sea were never separate. They were one, just as the earth and the stars were one. The giant stood tall on the shore, gazing at the horizon where blue met blue. He felt the unity of the universe, a giant not just in form but in spirit. The journey had changed him, not by leading him to a physical location where the sky kisses the sea, but to the realization that he was the meeting point of all elements. With a heart as deep as the ocean and a will as vast as the sky, Oribus became a guardian of the threshold, a keeper of the place where elements converge. His story, a legend whispered by the winds and carried by the tides, would inspire those who also sought to find where their sky met the sea. And so, Oribus's journey did not end, for it continued in the hearts of those he inspired. Each tale told, each dream dreamt, each quest embarked upon added threads to the tapestry of his legacy. A giant's journey, forever woven into the fabric of the world.